I came to IKEA today and had just shopped for 20 minutes. I was fine when I came in, but now I can't get out. You tell me what I should do. The security guards have shut the entrance. You see, so many people can't get out. It said there are close contacts among us. No one is allowed to leave, so I guess we'll have to stay at IKEA tonight. On August 13th, an IKEA store in Shanghai was shut down temporarily because the government had tracked a close contact of the virus to the site. Upon hearing the news, many of the terrified customers rushed to the exit, fighting the guards who were blocking the entrance. Those who failed to escape had to stay and wait until the early morning hours to be bused to quarantine sites. This is the current state of Shanghai, a city that is still far from returning to normal life and even further from revitalizing its economy. On August 14th, the Shanghai government announced in a press conference that the areas and people involved in the Xu Jiahui IKEA would be subject to a two-day closed-loop management. People inside the catchment area must undergo two days of quarantine and five days of health monitoring. Xu Jiahui District is a prestigious neighborhood and commercial center in Shanghai. During times when there is no outbreak, the business zone is a very busy place. Originally, the Shanghai government was promoting the third Shanghai May 5th shopping festival. Businesses in many districts of Shanghai, including Xu Jiahui, were offering special discounts to encourage people to go out and spend. The city government had expected to boost the desperately sluggish economy after more than two months of lockdowns. However, China's characteristic response to the outbreak, namely lockdown on the spot, quickly crushed the hopes of the city government and its citizens of returning to their normal lives. Fighting the epidemic is a political task, and all economic and social activities have to take a back seat to it. The public has become increasingly frustrated with the strict rules. Shanghai residents complained on the internet. Shanghai launched a shopping festival to promote consumer spending, and then succeeds in wiping out the public? There are more than 200 shops inside. Almost all of them have been wiped out, and only four or five of them are still open. Nowadays, Shanghai Hongqiao Airport, the T2 terminal, is really depressed. Today is August 8th. After checking into the airshow building, I realized that once vibrant and busy terminal building has become like this. I thought my flight was too early, and the stores here won't open yet. But on a closer look, many of them were temporarily closed. See, this is an old Shanghai specialty pastry store. It's empty. During breakfast time, KFC is not open, Lego has only two displays, and they are covered with dust. Only several stores of online celebrities are running. The temperature in Shanghai isn't so hot at night, so I went to the shopping streets. I find that there are still many stores that aren't open yet. All the doors are locked tight. It's August already. It has been more than five months since the outbreak in Shanghai, but there are still a lot of stores in the shopping streets that aren't open. Some aren't open because of the requirement of the Shanghai government's epidemic prevention policy. Some may have closed down because they couldn't survive. Even if they are allowed to open, there won't be much traffic due to the outbreak, and the stores might not sustain because of the lack of turnover. On August 14th, Shanghai announced that on September 1st, students of primary and secondary schools and kindergarten would officially start school. Students and teachers are required to take two nucleic acid tests three days before returning to school and one within 24 hours before the start of school. Students, teachers and staff who are from or passing through zones of medium to high risk or places declared by the local government to be under territory-wide closed management are temporarily postponed from returning to school. No one knows exactly how frequent the nucleic acid testing cycle should be. Previously, after Shanghai's lockdown was lifted on June 1st, people were required to show proof of a negative nucleic acid test within 72 hours before accessing public places and taking transit. But this time, the official announcement requires primary and secondary school students to have negative nucleic acid test reports within 24 hours upon entering the school. There is no official explanation as to why the 72 hours was revised to 24 hours all of a sudden.
Meanwhile, on August 13th, Shanghai also announced that the free nucleic acid testing policy would only be extended until the end of September. What will happen after that? Will individuals pay for the nucleic acid test, and how much will it cost? The government hasn't given any specifics. In mid-August, a new round of outbreaks started in Shanghai. Currently, there are six high-risk zones and three medium-risk zones in Shanghai's 16 districts. It means that more than half the city is still under the shadow of epidemic control. On August 7th, Shanghai announced that the outbreak had been cleared from the city's risk zones, but three days later, the outbreak resurfaced. On August 10th and 11th, two districts issued notices asking people to take nucleic acid tests again, and stores in the relevant areas were locked up immediately after they had just been opened. Residential neighborhoods that had just been celebrating the lifting of lockdowns were locked up again. This was the day on August 5th when the Mobile Cabin Hospital in Shanghai, built with nearly 100 million U.S. dollars, was demolished, leaving only a scrap pile. During this period, in a dramatic turn of events, the official media of Hainan Province and Shanghai, the two jurisdictions of the outbreak, began to quarrel. The city of Sanya in Hainan Province was shut down due to the outbreak, leaving 150,000 tourists stranded. Several cities in Hainan Province had extended the previously announced static management period for the entire territory. They are all tourists. Nobody is responsible to them. They can't leave Sanya. Officials are passing the bucket to each other. No one cares. The Shanghai official media, the paper, reported the outbreak in Sanya, which made the official media in Hainan province very unhappy. The paper is a subsidiary of Shanghai United Media Group. On August 8th, Hainan Daily criticized the paper for running news with headlines and subheadlines related to the Sanya outbreak for two consecutive days. It wrote, What kind of grudge does the paper have against Sanya? Why does it ignore the overall situation of epidemic prevention and control and try so hard to be negative? It questioned, Is it because the construction of Hainan's free trade port has stolen your status, your future, your business, your halo? Or did Hainan's GDP growth rate of over 10% in the first half of this year leave you with no shine? Shanghai started the city lockdown from Pudong on March 28, 2022, and it lasted until early June. The aforementioned article in Hainan Daily sarcastically remarked, Was it that Sonia didn't come in thousands of miles to help at that time? Or did we not entertain Shanghai people when they came to Sonia in waves after waves after your outbreak ended? It's rare for two official media to bicker publicly in shrewish street-calling style. It is likely because this is a special time when the CCP is holding the Beidaihur meeting. In addition, the 20th Congress, which involves a major reshuffle of CCP officials, will be held soon in the coming fall. Bureaucrats across China are waiting to take another step up the ladder. At this time of year, scandals in localities are taboo as they reflect on them badly. The quarrel between the two media groups goes to show that the Communist Party might appear to be an ironclad body, but behind the scenes it's all about collusion and fierce competition for self-interest. In the past and for a long time, the CCP tried to cover up various internal rifts. Today, however, such divisions have permeated the party from top to bottom, and they are easily exposed at some point when they are careless. According to Xinhua, China's official news agency, Chinese Vice Premier Sun Quanlan visited Hainan on August 13th to inspect epidemic prevention. Sun acknowledged that about 150,000 tourists were stranded in Hainan due to the outbreak. The state council has ordered all provinces and cities to accept the tourists stranded in Hainan. Still, there has been resistance to the order with some provinces or cities kicking the ball back and forth with Hainan about the tourists. My child is nine years old and needs to go home to school. My child is nine years old and needs to go home to school. (laughs) 
local officials in various provinces and cities are afraid that tourists will bring the virus back to their localities and cause or worsen local outbreaks. It's understandable. For example, the outbreak has now resurfaced in Xinjiang and Tibet, two of China's most popular summer tourist destinations, thus affecting other cities. A number of attractions in these two regions are now shut down, with opening dates to be announced. We have immediately suspended tourism agencies and online tourism enterprises that arrange trans-provincial group tours involving such counties and urban districts and relevant plane ticket and hotel services. Such a suspension will be rescinded as soon as there are no longer high or medium risk areas. Key urban areas in Urumqi have been under lockdown since August 10th. Officials say that the virus gene of the current outbreak in Urumqi, Xinjiang, is a variant BA5.2, a branch of the mutant strain Omicron. It has a stronger ability to escape immunity and spread, resulting in a more insidious outbreak. For the people of Xinjiang, the political suppression of the local ethnic minorities has been constant, and the economic downturn due to the epidemic has made life even more difficult for the locals. The same is true for Tibet, which had been free of new cases for 920 consecutive days until August 7, 2022. On August 7, new asymptomatic infections were reported all of a sudden. Since August 8, five days of static management were implemented in the medium and high-risk zones of Lhasa City. Silent management was implemented in the whole area of Shigat City until August 21st, and static management was implemented in the Ali region from August 11th. Our meat stock in key enterprises can last for 67 days, and vegetables can last for 16 days. Most of the supermarkets and wet markets are operating normally with abundant daily necessities, and the prices are stable. We have smooth supply channels. This is the border between the Tibet Autonomous Region and Sichuan Province. The road is blocked and no vehicles are allowed to pass except military vehicles. This is the 317 route from Tibet to Sichuan. We want to get to Dege County in Sichuan, but they won't let us return. We all have nuclear asset reports. They are normal, but they are blocking us here. It's said if we are blocked for four hours, the green coat will turn into red. We have one hour left, then the coat will turn red. If the coat turns red, we'll be isolated. We went out for a trip, now they treat us like foreigners. This is the Sichuan People's Government. Guys, I'm plastered, but it doesn't matter, the glass part is unblocked. It isn't known if it's due to the summer tourism season, with tourists traveling around, which may be causing the outbreak in mainland China to continue to spread. At the present time, in addition to the lockdown in Hainan province, Yibu city of Zhejiang province, Tibet and Xinjiang have all had lockdown measures imposed for three days, in addition to Xi'an city in Hebei province. Other places like Dunhuang City in Gongsu province and several cities in Hebei province are also in a state of lockdown. Officials in Xi'an, Hebei province have reported that the outbreak in the city is linked to an outbreak in Lhasa about 3,000 kilometers away. In addition, the most heavily defended, Beijing, has also seen another outbreak. Two of the 16 districts in Beijing have been redesignated as medium or high risk zones. On August 15th, a press conference on the prevention and control of the epidemic in Beijing reported that four new cases were found among people returning to Beijing. One of the patients had taken a flight from Lhasa to Chengdu. Of course, it's difficult to verify the authenticity of the official Chinese data. The Beijing government's report also stated that a number of people were detained because they impersonated other people's health code information to avoid normal checks. One of the infected individuals had been investigated for concealing information about a trip to a medium to high risk zone in order to return to Beijing as soon as possible, leaving 260 people to be judged as close contacts, therefore risky.
This is the dilemma facing the CCP today in the face of the outbreaks. The hope to clear the virus is getting smaller and smaller. It wants to activate the economy, but activating the economy will inevitably lead to the movement of people, and the movement of people will lead to new infections. The public is also becoming tired of the CCP's tight locks and controls, and they are finding ways to flee, making the CCP realize that the past methods don't seem to be as effective. Of course, the CCP is not resigned to this, and as people around the world return to normal life, the Red State is looking more and more strange and bizarre.